green screen keying. You know when you um, wear a mask, right? Like we do nowadays, you cover something up so that you can't see it or cough on it or something. And um, but what that does in photographic and video media is a mask actually removes something so that you can see through it. All right, so it's not covering something up, it's removing something so you can see through it. And so that's what we do with the green screen. We choose a green so that it will key out, we can key it out, we can choose a certain color, which is the green, which will disappear when we key it out. Now, of course, if you have anything else green on you, it will key out too. So this doesn't work if you're gonna dye your hair green. Not only will you have no hair in the picture, but it'll look like your head's caved in. So just get a job at Walmart or 7-Eleven or something. Um, we're gonna be using LumaFusion and keying out this background. And the purpose of that is so that I can put myself anywhere. Kind of handy, especially in these days. I'm stuck in my basement here. It's freezing cold outside. No real good place to take a shot. I mean, it's limited. It can be a bit tacky, so don't overdo it. Um, you know, unless you want to be tacky, you could do that, right? There's two things that we can key out. And one is chroma, which we call this green screen thing a chroma key, or the luma, you can key out the luma. Now, luma simply means light. In fact, if you lived in like Central Europe, Southern Europe, um, you could name your new baby girl Luma. It's a great girl's name, really sweet name. Um, if it turns out to be a boy, just call him Chroma. Because Chroma, <laughs> now they don't actually name boys Chroma, but it could, you could, you know, you can name your kids anything nowadays. But Chroma is basically means the intensity of color. Okay, so Luma is the intensity of light or the lack of it and chroma is the intensity of color or the lack of it, right? So the reason that we use a green screen is because green is an intense color and we can make it intense by lighting it or by choosing a certain color. And then green is also the opposite, the most opposite color of red, right? So anything like red tones like skin or all that kind of stuff, you don't lose that. So that's why green, okay? So, but you could actually key out any color and in LumaFusion in the new 2.4 version, you can actually choose the color, choose the background color with the eyedropper and key out that exact color, which is very handy, very powerful. All right, so chroma and luma. Luma, you would use to key out light. So, you know, it, you won't use it near as often um, because basically anything that's light, you're gonna, is gonna disappear, it's gonna be masked. Um, and anything that's dark isn't, or vice versa. And you can also reverse these keys, right? So um, if you are having trouble uh, getting a good uh, mask key, key out of, of your background, um, you can try reversing it and using different colors and that kind of thing, sometimes that helps. Okay, so green screen. We use green because it's intense and it's opposite to most skin tones. This is a $35 cloth from Amazon and then you iron it. I use this little steamer thing to get the wrinkles out of it. And then I light it because lighting will take wrinkles out as well. <laughs> if you light it from the side, you'll see the wrinkles more clearly than if you light it from the front. All right, so if you look right here, ta da there's my light, okay, right behind me. And um, I put it right behind my torso. Now that you know it's there, you can actually notice that the green is brighter closer to my body and it kind of gets a bit darker as it goes out, right? And then the other thing I have is these lights on the side, which we call rim lights or back lights. And I got one on both sides. Normally, if you're just lighting a subject like a person, you would just use one on, on one side or near to behind, straight behind. It helps give that a light on the, on the, the outline, which helps it give a little bit more third dimension in a two dimension picture, okay? But for keying out, I like to light both sides. It gives you a bit of light on both sides. It's, it's hard to notice. You can turn it up or down or whatever. And I use these rags over to diffuse the light and that kind of thing. Because one of the things that you gotta avoid with green screen is having a shadow. So every light has to be diffused. So I've got light coming through the glass doors at the front 
um, which is natural light, which I like more than anything else. Um, I've got an old desk lamp with a halogen light in it, and it's shining through a diffuser umbrella. <laughs> and it gives me a little bit of yellow on one side, which is kind of neat to do. And on the other side, I've got this, this white LED light, um, and it was giving me terrible shadows. So I put a diffuser on it. Now, this is a very cool diffuser. It costs nothing. I actually pulled it out of the garbage can, okay, and just clipped it on there. So use whatever junk you have around. All of this stuff is just old stuff that's that's been around. Desk lamps and whatever. Okay, because you don't have to go expensive. And the thing you, other thing you could do for the green background is if you've got a flat wall, just paint it green. Um, a flat green, hopefully not a gloss green, like, you know, use an eggshell color or whatever. And this bright, intense green. And, um, and then make sure that there's no bubbles in the wall or wrinkles or anything. And, and make sure you get your parents' permission first. All right? And do a wall somewhere, hopefully, where you've got natural light out in front of it or a way to light it with other lights. So by using a, a green screen and a chroma key function feature in LumaFusion, I can put myself anywhere. And simply by putting a different background. Now, when you plan to do that, notice the light on your background, the direction of the light that's shining on, their ba on your background, if it's sunny or whatever, and try to kind of replicate that on your subject so that it looks natural. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll look like two totally different colors or whatever. And you can do a lot of color correction in LumaFusion, so you can change your background, and you can also change your, yourself, your subject, right, to kind of match up better. Um, and another way, that's very advantageous to use that color uh, correction in your video editing software is if you have your background with a bit more green tones in it, you will not see the, the green sticking to hair and stuff like that, okay? That's always a challenge, especially with this white, light, fluffy hair. All right, let's just go through this step by step. Basically, if I have my main shot here, which I've done in front of the green screen on the, on the, on the base line, on the base track here. Um, I'll cut it and um, duplicate it, move it up one, grab a photo that I want to use for background. And then go into the green screen right here, the key, chroma key, and it's almost done. <laughs> so adjusting these to make sure you can see that there's little spots coming in and out here, like where my microphone is and some spots on my church shirt. So you want to make sure that you don't go too far, right? You go as far as you can without going too far. A lot of times these settings are already pretty good. So the brightness range, the main ones here are the erosion distance. Like I say, it'll pull the edge in, take the edge away. I mean, you can take it right away until you've got no hair left almost. So you want to make that till there's no green showing up anymore. And then the edge blur radius, which is a very handy one. Now you can use these ones up here to look at foreground only and you can give it some more adjustments. You can see the edge blur on that one quite better. You don't want too much blur. Take that down a bit. This one here shows you the background only. Um, then this one here is really cool. It shows you the mask. And that's very helpful because you can just come at it from the opposite direction. And you can see how sharp your edges are. Take it back to there. Now, the next thing I would do, looking at the light, obviously the subject is much darker than the background, so I would go back to the background, which is just a still image, and take the light down, take the brightness down a bit. Um, and then the other thing that is a good idea, you don't always feel like doing it, but add a Gaussian blur because the truth is that looks a little more realistic. Maybe take that down so you can still see the colors going on there. And then we'll go into the subject 
and add some brightness to kind of take that up. And it looks, the guy looks a little pink there. So I usually go through these sliders. You can play with all of those. And um, contrast is always a good thing to try. You can see what it's doing. It'll bring back the, the background again if you're not careful. If you do that, you just go back into your, your key and, and adjust, adjust that out again. Saturation, sometimes it ends up with too much. This is a sunny day, so you're looking at yourself on a sunny day. And that's about it, except for one thing. You'll notice I've got these white edges along here. And that's just because I didn't, I'm going to go into cropping. I didn't, wasn't careful enough with my green screen, so I just cropped that in. Just crop that edge in a bit. The background shows up. You can always run your slider here to see what it's going to look like. All right, so that's fairly decent. If that's what you want, that's what you got. Look what I found in the grocery store yesterday. It's the ingredients to an alpaster. So here's the process in a nutshell. So there's the still photo of the grocery store shelf. And we add the clip of me standing in front of the green screen. Um, and I had to do it tall, of course. And you notice the shadows on this one too. And this is where we'll see the power of 2.4 LumaFusion because it really is easy to knock this out. So you run over here to the green key, we hit it and it's pretty well already good. All right, let's go back to the fit and frame. Get this guy standing upright, get him down to about the right size, and stick him over here on the shelf. But you'll notice that it's a little bit unnatural because there's no shadow. Make another copy. Um, put it underneath, whatever. Just want the shadow one behind. And then we'll just blank that out for a minute, turn that off, and then go in here um, and get over here to the color, color presets. Put an original on here, take the brightness down to nothing, the contrast down to nothing. And we see we are making ourselves a black version of that clip. Um, then we'll add some Gaussian blur, maybe 40, maybe, yes, yeah, somewhere in there. And then what we're going to have to do here is take this down to a opacity of something that looks actually reasonable. What we'll do is we'll crop it down from the top. Um, because the shadow, you know, it'll get really black back there. And then we'll hit the soft edges so that it just kind of fades, fades away. Then let's go back to the timeline and put a front guy back in. And now we will rotate this guy probably something like that, so it kind of follows the light, and we'll move him back like that. And there we are. We've got a shadow that actually moves with me. See what my hand does there? The shadow comes in there. It makes it look like way more realistic. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do, a lot of other effects that you can do by keying out, like a lot. And um, we'll talk about those and I'll make some little videos on different ones, different projects as examples. And uh, we'll see how we can, we can uh, animate uh, texts and logos and key out using, using the, the green screen or whatever to key out the, the parts that we don't want. And um, yeah, you just let your imagination run wild. So we'll follow this up with a, a few more projects that'll help us at least get the concept and get the ideas of things that we could try on our own.